but there's a long tradition of these types of uh, uh, voices of conscience. Um, so I just immersed myself in the world of St. Sabina and, and spent time with Father Mike and, and his peacekeepers and the community there and tried to learn as much as I could. We love you on Windy City Live. Yes, we do. Tell us, how did all this ha happen? How did this come about? Well, I play me. I play Val Warner in Chirac, which is really cool. So when people see this movie, they are literally seeing Val, and I am a reporter in the movie. We talk about the violence, but what can we do personally? I think we got to be engaged, and I think engaged in a number of things. In our block, in our home, in our neighborhood, we got to be engaged. We got to fight the issues. We got to fight a government that is abandoned, you know, whole communities on the south and the west side. Um, we got to fight a governor who's cut out every youth employment program who's cut out violence prevention programs, who's abandoned um, our communities and the poor and the vulnerable. And I think we got to reach out to our brothers on the street and love them and respect them and help them, not just demonize them. My participation is only because of Mr. Spike Lee, our leader, our director, and uh, he reached out to me and blessed me with the opportunity to be in this film and said that his mission was to save lives in the south side of Chicago. I'll just say, like, it's first of all, the history of coming to Chicago and telling my jokes as a, as a young cat. I'm 37 now. I started about almost 15 years ago. Elroy taking me under the wing, let me do some jokes here and there for the radio stations and all that kind of stuff. More than that, we are more than that. We're greater than that, and I feel like in places like this, or Chicago, or whatever you want to call it, the hood, whatever you want to call it, like it's too much attention dwelled on the negative. I learned that no matter what you do and how much of a genuine heart you have, and if you're coming from a good place, people are going to criticize if they don't agree with what you're doing. Hi, we're from Empire, and you're watching the Higher Learning Network. So, how long have you been standing here? Not too long, like an hour. So, this is, we're moving in fast. This is a good sign. Yo, what's up? It's your man Tony Schofield from 1063 Chicago's R&B, and you are watching Men on Higher Learning. Now, I used to hang around with some men that was into some higher learning. It just wasn't that kind of higher learning, but I got myself together now, okay? What is it that you do in your quiet time, in your meditation time, that allows you to bring us the films that you do? I sit courtside in Mass Square Garden, world's most famous arena. We are live here today on the Higher Learning Network. Thank you so much for joining us. I have a very special guest, a family member who I didn't know some things about, so you're going to learn some things today, too. This is my big brother, Patrick Bradley. Say hi, Pat. Hi there. Who is a former, he retired from ComEd after 30-something years. Anyway, he was an electrical draftsman. draftsman. And what is an electrical draftsman? And do they still exist? Yes, electrical draftsman is a personnel that do wiring diagrams and do electrical drawings. And they still exist. And I'm the guy that in 1975, when it was Bill and Seals Tower, my boss dropped a, a service plan on my desk and asked me to draw up this, this uh, Seals Tower wiring diagram. So that's what I did. <laughs> How ironic is that? You drew up the plans. That means the, the wiring, the diagram. wiring, the wi just the wiring diagram for the for Sears Tower building. For the whole building. That's for a lot whole, of work. For the whole building. That's a lot of work. Well, see, Sears Tower has three basements. I've often heard that. Yeah, they got three basements, and I drew all the switchgear, transformers, and ground rods and stuff in the third basement. 
Okay, for those of us who don't understand electrical language, what did you just say? You did what? I drew the wiring diagram. The wiring diagram. And I uh, drew it in the third basement. In the third basement. The so they go down one level of the basement, they go down another level of the basement, basement. they go down. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty deep. Yeah, you know. And then I do the switch gear. This is a switch gear. So okay, so we're gonna put that up so the people can see it too. A, face, a fuse bay. A fuse bay, which is what? So well, they put fuses. No, no, to protect the transformers. Oh, to protect the transformers. To see what it said right there. Two transformers. Okay, two transformers. Okay. And then line bay. Okay. To bus bar. And what's and a bus bar? It's a like a neutral bar. A neutral bar. Mm -hmm. And this okay. is a. a the bus tie bay. Okay. If this here line go out, this will automatically close, and these two lines will come in effect. Oh, so, so the okay. building is never down. Oh, kind of like a super power charger. Well, like I a mean, bag up. A backup. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. A backup. Y'all yeah. get that right? Yeah, backup. you okay. got it right. Something okay. like a backup generator. Right. And right. say, so who is that man back there? He's my backup, right? For when I'm not available. He hosts the men on High Alert. Let's turn it host. Come over here so the face folks can see your face. Now he don't want you to see. But we'll deal with him later. Now see where it say, see it? The line that's, say two transformers and then. Okay, to the 110th floor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. See these lines on my right hand. This. I'll line. show it to you. Okay. In my left hand, they, they line up. Okay. So page two lines up with page one. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna put this up there on the screen so yeah. our viewing audience can see that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> the Sears Tower. Can you believe that? Now this is the funny part. Here come Doug. Mm. This is the funny part. Lean in so they can see. I had no idea. I dan and you drew that in 1975. Yeah. In 1975, I danced there as a dance troupe. My girlfriend Sheila, Karen, and myself. We danced uh, for the grand opening for some event they had going on. And it was 1975 that we danced there. So you had just completed that drawing and then we danced there shortly after. Bet you didn't know that, did you? No. Did you know I used to dance? No. <laughs> wow. See, I, I never knew that this one, my other brother, Doug, just walked away. He's an artist. He, he, he likes to draw. He draws uh, landscape art walls and murals and stuff like that. Patrick likes to draw, but Patrick does electrical drawing. For kids who may be watching this, or even just young people, what is what What do you have to do? What are the qualifications to get a job like that? Well, you have to go to school and take a class that refers to that what you want to be into. Okay, so how did you know to choose electrical drawing? Well, because I hope I had hope to get a, a, a job with Commonwealth Edison when I got out. Okay, when you got out of where? Out of the Army. Oh, so you went to the Army? Yeah, so I went to the Army and I went to Tacoma. I was in Washington in the Army. And when I got off work, I went to Tacoma Community College and took drafting. Okay. While still in the Army. While still in the Army. And then when I uh, got out of the Army, I went to Olive Harvey junior college and took drafting again please don't tell me this damn thing oh yeah it's recording i'm sorry here it is go ahead and, and took drafting again and then when i finished drafting again i went to come with edison they gave me a drafting test which was easy to me because i had college drafting in college two oh. different colleges okay in the army and while out of the army okay and come with edison gave me a drafting test and I got him like a 95 on the test. Wow. And they hired me in two weeks. The rest, and the rest is history. 1975. So yeah. 30 years later, you've been there all these years and you retired from there. So what do you tell young people who are watching this, who can't find a job, who have good skills, math skills? Like I do remember you like math. Yeah. You had to have good math skills. So what do you tell the young people listening who, who might be, who, who are good in math or who want to be good in math? Well, whatever you want to do, go to school and have that major in what you want to do when you get out of school. Something that's related to what you want to be or what you want to do with your life. Hmm. Powerful. Just don't go to school and take anything. Right. Go what you're gonna use later. 
Okay. Like in high school, they might have you take some courses that you ain't gonna never use again. Right, like you home don't, economics. Yeah, you don't, want, <laughs> you don't want to do that. I still when don't know go, how to cook. Okay. When, you, when you when you go to college, you take something relating to what you want to do when you get out of college. Right. And how, what you want what you want to do with your life. Now you've grown on, and your kids are growing and up and out of college. What do your kids do? Did any of them follow in your steps? Well, not exactly. They follow their own steps, which I've supported them. Okay. My baby girl, she graduated from DePaul. Is that Rashida? Yeah, Rashida. I got the name right, Rashida. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, her sister uh, is a registered nurse. Not a nurse's helper, a registered nurse. An RN. She's right there next to the doctor. Right. Well, she's going to school now. She graduated in October. And uh, she'll be a uh, nurse's practitioner. Now, mm -hmm. which one is this? What's her name? Catrice. That's Catrice. Hey, Catrice. Mm -hmm. You know, Auntie has senior moments sometimes, but I still love you. It's <laughs> with my heart, okay? Yeah. Wow. And Sharon is the oldest daughter. The oldest daughter. I see. She. I always think of her as the as the youngest, cause I hate to say it, but I forget things sometimes. Anyway, go ahead. Um, what does Sharon do? And I just uh, talked to her yesterday. I'm supposed to know these things, right? Yes, I have talk. senior moments, so forgive me. But she's uh, she's a special girl. And she's smart. She's real smart. She teaches me things. She even teaches me how to use social media. So thank you, Miss Sharon, Mwah. because she said, Auntie, you got to get on Facebook. You on TV. You need to be on Facebook. You need to be on Twitter and Instagram. I think Instagram for kids. I don't want to be on Instagram for what? Okay, but that our students are on there, so I still should know, right? Okay. Anyway, oh wait, uh, I digress. Uh, so on a closing note, what would you say to? The young people who are out here and who are having challenges and they just don't see a future for themselves well find something that you want to do make yourself do something and then do it and if you don't succeed in it try something else that you would like in a secondary and do it don't never give up because you give up it's over never give up period you heard <laughs> All right, thank you. So for... keep hope alive. <laughs> <laughs> From the back seat, right? Stay on purpose, stay empowered. If you just tuned in today, you're listening to my big brother, Patrick Bradley, who drew, drew, uh, designed, drew the schematics for the electrical drawings for the Sears Tower. Bet you didn't know that. You got that right here on the Higher Learning Network. Want to give him a closing thought, big, big bro? Well, I can't thank like you can thank. You can't think like I can think, but we both can think the way we think. Now think on that. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I call that, that's a Patrickism. That's from your very own. You live here in Chicago. This is from the man who drew the Sears Tower, the drawing for the Sears Tower right here in Chicago. How you like me now? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, now that that's over, I'm going to do, do something real crazy.
Benverine, they must be great. <laughs> What's his name? Benverine. Move around. I can sell deodorant right now. <laughs> Charge double for it. I want to give a lot of love to my sisters. I love them in the spirit. Thank y'all for coming out. That's women changing their lives, y'all. Man, ain't God a good, y'all. All right, Janine, can I get you to the stage? I don't know where you was at. Janine, can I please get you to the stage? That's my work husband, y'all. He just be bossing me around everywhere we go. Lord have mercy. But B B L C, that's my brother, and I love him. Um, I just want to address everybody right quickly. I want everybody right. to just take a moment and think about so the fact that somebody laid down last night and did not get up. Somebody had plans on today for right now. And somewhere in this city just a few blocks from where we are somebody's planning to put their family in the ground a loved one so on today let's make sure that we keep the main thing the main thing we came out here for a taste of gospel so it should be rooted in the gospel so let everything 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 that has But if you did not come into this place knowing who God is, I hope that you stop at this moment and say, I want to know about who this God is that they're singing about. So I don't care how long you've been in church. If church ain't been in you, this is a fine time to take some time and just say, I need to know about this Jesus. I need somebody to right now have a Damascus experience. You need to enter in beyond a 
bell because these people that are coming to share and worship with you, they're not coming to perform. They back there praying before they getting started, okay? So we not playing. We serious about this thing. We serious about 316. So if you don't know about 316, you need to turn to your left, turn to your right, and ask them what 316 is really all about. So we want to make sure that we still have some church. So we got some food out here in these vendors, but we came up to lift the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you're not here to lift the name of Jesus, somebody lock the gate. Don't let them out until they know about Jesus. So we come to lift up the name of Jesus. And we are coming here because we going to sing the hell out you hell yet and sing the hell out you hell hound. And right now coming to this great Your hair is stage, gorgeous. We'll be Thank you. You're welcome. Say amen and clap your hands as they come. How y'all doing out there? Well, we just gonna sing and we gonna get out of the hallway.
attendees about wellness and just tips to reverse type 2 diabetes. We're really thankful and really hope to have her again soon.